Mother Nature. Yeah, good Good news. news. You have just received a nice gentle hug from humanity with the swearing in of Australia's new Minister for the Environment, Greg Hunt. So reassuring that no one in the Liberal Party could see the irony in installing a Minister for the Environment with the last name Hunt. I'm sorry that my party doesn't judge people on superficial criteria like their name. We look at integrity and your ability to look angry in opposition and smug when you're not. Good point, Mr Hunt. Let's look at why you, who currently holds the title for world's most disgusting haircut, deserves to be entrusted with the stewardship of some of the most fragile ecosystems on the planet. Well, my thesis at uni was on climate change, for starters. Entitled, a tax to make the polluter pay, where he states in his conclusion that the pollution tax offers us an opportunity to exert greater control over our environment. He's pushing the diversity carbon tax, but he's even more passionate about about keeping his job. Which is why he now believes... Oh, the carbon tax is a pointless burden on Australian families and businesses, Tony. Oh, well done, Grigo. Oh, what have I done? Career politician? Don't, Don't think so. What's obviously happened is that Mr Hunt, who spent years of top-tier academic research on the subject, suddenly realised in the space of a few days that Tony Abbott, a man with no qualifications or interest in the issue, was absolutely correct when he said that climate change is, quote, absolute crap. That was a really good counter-argument. To my 115-page thesis on why there's no substitute for the effectiveness of a carbon tax, Clearly not selling the world's future short so he can keep a job. After all, a huge list of experts agree with direct action. Yay! Mr Hunt names seven in a radio interview where the announcer then proceeded to call them. Turns out that only three... Less than half. Good discount. Actually actually supported it. Still, it's a pretty big majority, isn't it? Three experts in the entire world support direct action. It's a scientific consensus. consensus. Of which none of those consenting are scientists. Let's do the math. Two of these experts are from the same consultancy firm, which would have no vested interest in saying that, seeing as they're part of the coalition's business advisory council! Business and the environment are good friends. The other expert is Danny Price, managing director of Frontier Economics. Notice anything? Not one of these experts have any qualifications to do with the climate. Alternative approach. Ooh, that's natural. It should also be mentioned that the Climate Institute, which is a completely independent, non-partisan organisation, unlike Exigency... Yeah, but the guys at Exigency are nicer. Yeah, he looks like a hit at parties. ...found that if direct action was adopted by the rest of the world, it would lead to dangerous levels of global temperature increases, somewhere between 4.5 and 6.5 degrees Celsius. And what did the temperature increase of that? That level mean? Can't grow crops on half the Earth's surface anymore. And half of the world's animals would be extinct. Ooh, got out of that one pretty well. Christ is averted. And if it gets to 6 degrees, it's almost certain that climate change will spiral out of control and jump to 12 degrees, meaning that half of the planet will be so hot that if you stepped on it, you'd be cooked instantly. But the other half will be okay, won't it? No. Earth would essentially become Dante's Inferno. Look, there's Greg Hunt now. <laughs> So correct is the Liberal Party on climate change that not even the head of the UN's climate change negotiations, Christina Figueres, who unfairly quoted World Meteorological Organization data stating that It is absolutely clear that there are increased heat waves in Asia, Europe and Australia and this will continue. The Greg Hunt was able to swipe that amateur evidence away with the most credible source in the world. Well, I looked up what Wikipedia said and it was clear that bushfires were frequent events that have occurred in the hotter months since before European settlement. This happened in real life. The Australian Minister for the Environment the man who is supposed to take this issue more seriously than anyone else in the country refuted ironclad data, which at this point is as ridiculous to challenge as it is to deny the existence of gravity with a passage from Wikipedia which had nothing to do with climate change to begin with. Best use of taxpayer money in the history of Australia. We have purchased for the low cost of $336,000 a year a human rubber stamp, which was given a spin when he approved Clive Palmer's mine in the Galilee Basin, whose name succinctly describes Australia's environmental policies since day one of the Liberal Party's governance, China first. Yeah, but let them know how I struck a deal between Clive Palmer and the animals. Sure thing. Greg Hunt has allowed Mr Palmer to rip up only 4,000 of the 8,000 hectare nature reserve in the basin. I may not mine for gold, but I'm certainly a gold digger, aren't I? Leave and damn with half. Yeah, well, I also made him buy 10,000 hectares of offset land. Which, depending on the trees they plant in this area, could capture as much as 5 million tonnes of the 85.6 million tonnes of carbon China First is estimated to release. That's almost 6%. Now, that's 1% more than Salo has real lemon in a can. Why don't he just join the Greens? He's a hippie. Probably wouldn't be allowed 
about to, seeing as he sat idly by while the rest of his party discussed plans to privatise the Great Barrier Reef, for which there was, quote, tremendous enthusiasm to sell the most awe-inspiring ecosystem on the planet to either Japanese or Chinese companies. Both countries with impeccable environmental records. China's rivers are often covered from start to end with dead fish from the level of pollution. And the Japanese are world-renowned for being nice to aquatic life. The source then went on to state, We firmly believe that governments shouldn't do what private firms could do better. The sad thing is, they're probably right. It's probably better to entrust the Great Barrier Reef to private Chinese or Japanese companies than it is to Greg Hunt. An intellectual prostitute who finds solace in the fact that whenever someone recites the quote, The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. He says to himself, Well, that's great. I'm not really much of a good man. I'm more of a... Nothing man, yeah? Greg Hunt, the Smithers of the Liberal Party. Please press the subscribe button now. Come on.